Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, at the National Day Rally, PM Lee's announcement that Singapore will repeal Section 377A of the Penal Code and amend the Constitution to protect the definition of marriage reflects the common agreement that many believe our gay citizens have a place in society and should not be treated as criminals. And in Singapore, marriage between a man and woman remains the fundamental building blocks of a family. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to touch on a few points. One, 377A as a penal code issue. Two, protection of current social and family norms. Three, preventing increasingly aggressive and divisive activism. Mr. Speaker, there remains some concern that the repeal of 377A will lead to a drastic change in so social norms, such as how marriages would be defined in the future, sexuality educations in schools, and what can or cannot be screened on televisions and in the cinema. However, we have to consider how since 2007, when 377A was last debated, social acceptance for homosexuality has shifted appreciably, as mentioned by PM Lee. Back then, it was decided not to actively enforce 377A. In addition to shifting societal values, we have to also consider the significant risk of Section 377A being struck down in the court of law on the grounds that it breaches the provisions of equal protection in our constitution as discussed extensively by Min Shanmugam earlier. It has been unsuccessfully challenged in the past before, but it will be reckless of us to not consider this and the ramifications if it was struck down without any protection on the definition of marriage as how our society values it. Mr. Speaker, while I appreciate that there are some res uh, reservations and concerns from certain segments of society, most of us agree that two males committing sexual act or acts of gross indecency, as the law puts it in private, should not be punished by imprisonment of up to two years. Hence, it is only right that we consider to repeal 377A in our penal code. We acknowledge that we are still a largely conservative society, but our gay citizens have a place in society and should not be treated as criminals. While in general more accepting of homosexuality now, we are also very concerned about protecting the current so social and family norms. With the repeal of 377A, how can we effectively safeguard our social norms and values, and in particular, the institution of marriage which is currently defined as being that between men and women. We must also understand how this definition underpins various national policies such as housing and education. Hence, it is even more necessary for us to ensure that the current social and family norms are protected. Undoubted, undoubtedly, there are strong views for and against the repeal of 377A and the amendment to the Constitution. There are concerns that there will be increased activism on both ends of the spectrum, which can potentially be aggressive and, more importantly, divisive to our society. I think it is necessary for us to accept this as a consensus. The best possible outcome, given the various viewpoints and deliberations with regards to all the various groups of people, religious, non-religious organisations and the community, which has been ongoing, since 2007 and before. While we should not curtail or suppress social activism for causes that our citizens believe in, we must also caution against extreme views and actions that may prove to be divisive to our society. In time to come, should values and norms here in Singapore appreciably shift again, then we should be able to come together, sharing our views and reaching a consensus on how we best move forward. Activists in both camps did not think that they should resort to drastic measures to highlight their cause, nor should any of us be influenced by foreign developments, including pushing values from multinational corporations which are not aligned with our Singaporean values. Singapore's laws are its own, and we need not follow the lead of other countries if it, did not, if it does not suit the values and disposition of our citizens. Mr. Speaker, in Malay, please. Kita dapat lihat bagaimana seluruh dunia berubah mengikut peredaran zaman. Pandangan masyarakat juga telah berubah. Section 377A, 377A ialah sebuah perundangan yang kita warisi daripada British dan telah dijadikan sebagai satu simbol untuk takrifkan 
perkahwinan sebagai antara seorang lelaki dan wanita. Awal tahun ini, di dalam kes Tan Seng Ki versus Peguam Negara, pejabat Peguam Negara mendapati bahawa terdapat risiko besar bahawa Section 377A boleh ditolak di mahkamah kerana ia melanggar peruntukan bagi persamaan dalam perlembagaan kita. Meskipun kes-kes sebelum ini tidak berjaya untuk menolak Section 377A, namun kita tidak boleh mengambil risiko itu. Lebih-lebih lagi kerana keputusan yang besar seperti itu akan meninggalkan impak yang besar kepada perundangan lain. Bagi masyarakat Islam kita, kita mempunyai amlah yang memberikan definasi perkahwinan. Awal tahun ini, saya gembira bahawa Timbalan Perdana Menteri Lawrence Wong telah memberikan jaminan bahawa PAP akan terus menegakkan polisi yang mengutamakan keluarga dan akan terus memastikan bahawa perkahwinan akan ditakrifkan sebagai antara lelaki dan wanita. Walaupun ini memastikan bahawa polisi Walaupun ini memastikan bahawa polisi di Singapura akan terus mengutamakan keluarga dan definasi perkahwinan tidak akan bertukar, kita tidak dapat menafikan bahawa seluruh dunia telah dan akan terus berkembang, termasuk nilai-nilai masyarakat mereka sendiri. Kita tidak boleh dipengaruhi oleh anasir-anasir asing, termasuk syarikat MNC yang menyokong nilai-nilai yang tidak sehaluan dengan masyarakat kita. Undang-undang Singapura adalah undang-undang kita dan kita tidak seharusnya mengikut perkembangan di negara lain jika ia tidak bersesuaian dengan negara kita. Oleh itu, ia adalah penting bagi kita untuk mentakrifkan apakah nilai-nilai yang kita inginkan dalam masyarakat Singapura. Ibarat pepatah Melayu, melentur buluh, biarlah dari debungnya. Ia adalah penting bagi kita untuk membina keluarga kita dengan nilai-nilai ini supaya kita dapat menanamnya dalam anak-anak kita. Mengenai homoseksualiti, kita harus mengakui bahawa terdapat segelintir dalam masyarakat kita yang berdepan dengan cabaran-cabaran pribadi dan kadangkala mereka diejek, dikutuk dan dipinggirkan atau ketinggalan tanpa sokongan keluarga mereka sejak muda lagi. Dalam menanam nilai-nilai ke- kekeluargaan, kita juga harus memupuk dan menunjukkan nilai-nilai keagamaan. Kita seperti ramah, belas kasihan dan kasih sayang antara satu sama lain supaya individu-individu ini tidak terasa tersisih dan tersingkir daripada masyarakat kita. Sedang kita masing-masing memberi sokongan keluarga, saya menggesa masyarakat kita untuk merujuk kepada Asatiza dan Muiz untuk mendapatkan bantuan dan bimbingan jika diperlukan. Mr. Speaker, admittedly, however, this is not the end of our conversation on this topic, just like all the other issues that we face in society. Society is dynamic and ever-changing. Hence, we must continue to keep future dialogue civil, rational, and most importantly, beneficial for Singapore as a whole. We only have to look around us to see how issues can be made very divisive if everyone insists on their entrenched views and not hear each other out and come to a compromise. While we would like to repeal 377A, we would also like to protect the prevailing definition of marriage while still allowing recourse in the future. How then do we protect the definition of marriage, something which we all value as a society? By ensuring that the definition of marriage is dependent of the parliament. And parliament will define marriage based on the prevailing values and views of the Singaporean society at any given point of time. And at this juncture, I wish to thank PM Lee and DPM Wong for the clear assurance that the PAP government will continue to uphold our family-centered policies and is fully committed to that, and will continue to uphold marriage as defined between men and women. In this way, even if one does not agree with the repeal of 377A, at least the definition of marriage is preserved for the time being in our constitution. On the other hand, For those who welcome the repeal and look beyond decriminalization, there is room for, def- for the definitions to change when public opinion, values, and non- norms differ. I think this is a viable compromise for our society to move forward for now. With the points considered earlier, Mr. Speaker, sir, I do support the repeal, repeal and the amendments to the Constitution. Thank you.